Monsters. Monsters. Ooh, monsters. What is a monster? Are monsters real? Is this a monster? How about this monster? Is man the real monster? Ooh, that's deep. Thank you. But more importantly, what was that noise? And why is it so dark in here? H hello? And who's in the closet? And what's under this bed? And whose room is this? And I don't know what happened to your son. It was a monster. I'd like to go home now, please. All this and more on this episode of In Da Quaranti. I don't think I can get behind orangutans. I'm not too bothered if they go extinct. Oh, what? It's the flaps that bother me. Oh, the flaps you know are I mean? part of their appeal. Oh, they're just awful. Have you ever seen one in real life? No. IRL, they are amazing. They communicate really incredibly with humans. They're so cool. I love them. Like, look at this. Shave that bit off. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> now that I'm like focusing on the oranga flaps, I will admit that they are quite unseemly. They're unpleasant. If I was like in the orangutan world, right, I would be constantly just walking past and just slapping them behind the back of the face flap. <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. Hey, Greg. What's up, Stacy? Whack. Just like a little <laughs> flick as you're walking by. Oh, okay. And I bet it makes like a real meaty sound. Like when you slap two palms together. I'm imagining this in like a primate high school where like the chimps and the gorillas are all hanging out with the orangutans and the orangutans are just getting bullied for their flaps. It's like, suck flaps, how's it going? <laughs> no way, it's like, it's the other way around. It's like, oh, well, you don't have your flaps yet. We've had our flaps for six months now. There's, you know, some runt of the litter and he looks in the mirror and he goes, what if I never get any flaps? What if they never grow through? And then like the orangutan mum. <laughs> sort of comes into the room, puts her arm around his shoulder. It's okay, honey. You know, we all grow at different rates and you'll get your flaps one day. Your dad didn't get his face flaps until he was at least... <laughs> his dad walks past the bedroom with just these, like, enormous face flaps. <laughs> In Slavic myths, uh, Baba Yaga is a wild woman or dark lady of magic Ooh. in Russian folklore. There are many stories about her. Like most witches, Baba Yaga can fly, but she does not use a broomstick. Instead, she sits in a giant mortar, a, a bowl, uh, for cool. grinding food, <laughs> uh, with her <laughs> knees almost touching her chin. This is a terrible form of transport. All right. She drives very fast across or above the uh, forest floor. Uh, and use the pestle as a rudder. I love it. It's one of those things when someone said, yeah, well, have you heard about our folklore? <laughs> I like, so, like, all the representatives of monster folklore have met for a summit. The Slavic guy has just, like, forgotten his notes. Well, we've got this witch, right? And, um, she can fly. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, well, ours is a witch, too. Okay, well... Uh, it flies on a broomstick. Oh, broomstick, okay. What do you got? And then you go, oh, mine's different. It's got, um, and then you just start scanning the kitchen. And you're like, look, hold on a minute. Pot, 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 uh, it's a wheel of cheese. Uh, uh m mortar and pestle. That's stupid. You can't even, you can't stand on a mortar and pestle. It's way too small. Big one. Oh, well. Just looking around the kitchen. I love it. <laughs> That's so funny. It's from the feast of uh, maximum occupancy. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most monster like of the real animals, though? I suppose the giant squid. The giant squid is the thing of haunting dreams. Like, I can't watch those deep ocean documentaries. Uh, they are terrifying. I tell you what's really annoying about that, right? I've been in the deep ocean before, and been fishing in the deep ocean, uh, even jumped out of the boat, gone swimming in the deep ocean, gone snor snorkeling. I never had any fear of the deep ocean. It never occurred to me that I should be afraid of it. And then someone started pointing out how afraid they were of the deep ocean. And gradually over the last few years, I've been cultivating this fear of the deep ocean. <laughs> and it's born out of nothing. It's just because someone else is afraid of something. All of a sudden, I've started to become afraid of it as well. I think you've just gained their rationality. I think there's every reason to be scared of the deep ocean. It is objectively terrifying. It is where all the Lovecraftian creatures live. You, you're, you've just come round to sense, if you ask me. Doppelganger monster. Why is there a picture of Leo? <laughs> what? What is 
is that? It's my own doppelganger. Uh, His doppelganger from Russia, of course. He was made in a Russian <laughs> lab to uh, to battle the American movie stars <laughs> and try and rival them, but he got squished up against the test tube. And this happened. Can you get Leo on the phone? No, he's busy. Can get me his Russian non-union equivalent. <laughs> yeah, that's it. These are just both Chris Pratt. That's ridiculous. I'm fairly certain, yes. That's just both Chris Pratt. Oh, no, um, wait. The headline is Chris Pratt warns of pervy dude doppelganger. That's the exact excuse I'd use as well. <laughs> I would say Mothra is a pretty shitty... Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Who cares? It's Big Moth, in it. I mean... Not good if you left a lamp on in the house and the door open <laughs> at night, but otherwise, fine. May I come in? So easily defeated, that monster. Uh, Shoot some BBs through <laughs> its wings and it's done. Yeah, it's light a candle. Go straight into it. I really don't like King Kong. No. I just, I, th I just think it shows a lack of imagination. I don't think the societal, sociological commentary about it is very clever either. No. Don't be bad to nature, otherwise it'll crush you with its big monkey paw. What, so it's like a shitty Moby Dick? Yeah, it's like a Moby Dick for idiots. Moby Dick for people who can't read. I don't know, man. I think I think you can get revenge on nature. Like, doesn't it make perfect sense? I mean, I could imagine it not an Ahab's day where you gotta go fight the whale and it's all difficult and you lose your life and hell's heart stab at thee and all that bullshit but Ooh, literary historian well, uh, I, I, I read bits of it once uh, I think I heard some Simpsons yeah. references on if we wanted to take revenge on all the whales mm. hunt them all down and kill them we could probably do it like me and you <laughs> <laughs> we take all that sweet YouTube cash, get ourselves a ship, and we're just like at the port. And he's going, Sir, Ar, why are you going on the seven seas? We're on a quest to kill all the whales. What, is it like you're getting like blubber or um, ambergris <laughs> or what have you? No, it's whale genocide. Clicks. Clicks. <laughs> Yeah, we're vlogging it. <laughs> I'm going to vlog my unending quest to murder all the whales. I mean, whales are pretty close to monsters. At least the blue whales. If whales didn't exist, they would be monsters. If you described a whale in a world where they didn't exist, mm. that's a straight monster right there. I mean, that's very monster-like. It's enormous. That's yes. That to there is probably like a bus. It's so big. You know what? It's too big. Yeah. It's kind of rude. That's why they gotta die. Yeah. I bet it's really easy, like, just a couple cyanide pellets, like, <laughs> oh, here's some krill, little fellow. Doop, doop, doop. And then just keep swimming. We just go around the ocean with, like, a giant wine corks. Yeah, wine cork, uh, maybe. I think they'll blow that one out, but if you put, like, a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us on, like, the bow of a ship, whipping grenades <laughs> with three pointers into the <laughs> holes of whales. I reckon, you know, there's all these endangered species, you know, save the whales, save the dolphins, blah, 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 blah. Fuck those guys. True, true. <laughs> you could save the whales and save the dolphins. Or, if we just kill them all we wouldn't have to save them like if it's just done yeah probably saves you a bunch of cost don't have to hear about oh we're damaging the environment it'll hurt the whale you can have as much sonar as you like we're doing the charity sector a favor by eliminating their problem yeah think of how many resources we could put into other animals or like people if we just yeah kill all the whales hmm I love this song. Excuse me? I, I love this song. It's region locked in my country, but I use NordVPN. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, Shadow Man. The girls just don't want my VPN. Listen, buddy. You gotta go out there and be assertive. Women love a VPN with confidence. Assertiveness. Confidence. Okay. So Pyrocynical just stole my whole ad and made a low energy version of it. Hey there. My name's NordVPN man. I'm a Gemini. I love to f And I can offer you 70% off a three year plan. It's not working, Shadowbound. Well, have you tried coming across as needy? If girls love a VPN they can take care of, try again. Hi. Um, I can't get the full Netflix catalog in this country, and I lost my mum's credit card. Can you buy me a subscription to NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash incognito?
You okay in there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, it's fine, I just had some glitter in my eye. It never works out for me, Shadow Man. I'm, I'm destined to be alone forever. Hey, I know it'll cheer you up. Yeah? Yeah! Ugh, what a simp. I know, right? Who is she? Oh my god. I love that dress. Lucky guy. Damn, she's smoking. I kinda <gasps> want a VPN now. Out of the way, thoughts. I got me a real woman. Too late now, you had your chance. You gonna cry about it? Huh? Here's your drink back. Guess you should have gotten Nord VPN. Nord. Mermaids were always supposed to be sort of dangerous, weren't they? And then they've become kind of sexy. Yeah, but their sexiness is part of their danger. Isn't their whole thing that they like sing and make sailors crash into rocks? I think the real question is, would you? Would I? Um, no. Probably. No. I would be so preoccupied with the existence of a monster. How does this happen? Under what circumstances? Are we like dating? Look, I found this girl. You're gonna love her. Okay. Right? I, I, all right, all right, yeah. All right. I'm open minded, you know me. Come and meet her. Um, she's she's hanging out by the pool. Oh, great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm big into yeah, swimming yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Anyway, uh, here she is. Uh, her name's Ariel. Cool name. This is Ordinary Things. Hi, Ariel. Nice to meet you. We just get to talking. She's just hands on the, the rim of the pool. I'm unaware. Yeah, yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this stage, the connection is made. So that's all all a go. Mm. So you guys are chatting. It's all going very well. <laughs> and she says, you know, you want to grab a cup of coffee sometime? You say, yes. Wow, that's really great. And then she props her hands up on the side of the pool and she lifts out her big tail. What do you say? Yeah, the tail, I hate to appear shallow, but you know, I can get past the tail. I mean, I shouldn't be so prejudiced, <laughs> perhaps. Maybe I should open my life up to the potential of dating a nautical creature. <laughs> so there she is standing on the bridge. Can't wait to see her. You guys have just matched on Tinder, right? She looks great from that distance from the bridge. And you walk up to the bridge and she turns to you and she goes, oh, ordinary things. It's so great to meet you. <laughs> Terrific. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Oh my god, we've got so much in common. What do you say, second date? Sure. I'm gonna take my shallow hat off and just be like, this could be useful. There are practical advantages to uh, oh, yeah? going out with a girl who has cat butt. Yeah. Um, she can reach stuff. Reach stuff? Jump up and grab stuff. She probably has excellent hygiene. Yeah. <laughs> Cats are very clean. I think she's slightly offended by that. Beggars can't be choosers though. I feel like this, this girl's probably like, oh. <laughs> a bit unlucky in love. I cannot believe you are saying this. This is a fine young lady. And she doesn't lick herself, right? She just cleans herself in the shower like a normal person. Oh, have you ever smelled a wet cat? That's no good. <laughs> <laughs> what say you, cat or mermaid? What's better? I think it would, the fish would smell. And also, you're stuck beside the water. Cat is more practical for getting around. I mean, cat woman mm. is a character. I feel like cat ladies are often sexualized in media, which is strange now I think about it. Yes. So you would be willing to live with cat? No. No? <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be on. I'm gonna be honest with you now and just say that like, I think all animal human hybrids, I'm, I'm gonna say it. I don't care if it's politically incorrect. Uh, animal human hybrids, not for me. This is outrageous. People are gonna be offended by this. That's right, canceled. Ordinary things, I know we've been going out for two weeks. I'm starting to develop feelings for you and I, I have to tell you something. What is it? I just have to come out and show you. It's about my hooves. What behooves you? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna use a pun. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, look at these. Suckers. <laughs> Look at these babies. Wow, that's a lot to take in. That's almost acceptable. If she kept some shoes on. I could live with that. I could live with that, yeah. I think that's all right. These look like they fit into a high heel. That's true. I think it would all come to a head when you're at a social gathering with her. You're at the beach or something and everyone's taking their shoes off and you'd just be like, could you, could you leave your plimsolls on? <laughs> your, your Doc Martens. But we're at the beach. Yeah, but. <laughs> And that's where the relationship really falls apart. It's like, I just don't want people to know that you've got deer hooves. Sorry. 
She's a great climber though. Great climber. Yeah, so at the climbing gym, she is she's looking good. What about if it's like this? That's freaky. I'm scared of that, to be honest. You don't like that. You're gonna get hoofed into next week with those babies. You know, she's saying, Oh, you know, let's go on a second date. But she goes, Wait, ordinary things, there's just one thing you've got to know. What, what's that? This <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That is a big tail. <laughs> I think I could get past the tail. Nice. All right. Because you know what? It's an addition rather than a... A substitution. Squirrel girl, I will call her. She hates that. She hates it when you call her that. You would always have an ample supply of nuts. And that is, for me, a big bonus. You'd be like in the park and you'd just be like, oh, I could really go <laughs> for some, some pecans right now. And she'd be like, no, don't worry about it. I've got us sorted. She'd just burrow. <laughs> what you want? Hazelnut, <laughs> walnut, pecan, uh, pistachio. I got everything. Shell on, shell off. <laughs> shell. I mean, Pokemons are monsters. They're pocket monsters, aren't they? Well, they must be. It's in the name. Pokemon, Pokemon monsters. Oh, wait, that's Digimon. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read you some names of some new Pokemon. <gasps> oh, go on. You're going to do that, and I'm going to draw what I think it looks like as well. Okay, I'm going to go over a new one. So this Pokemon is called Rayquazar. 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 I'm going to guess it's spelt like that. It's not, but go with it. Okay. Okay, I've got some facts for you to help. Okay, yes, first clue. Okay, so one of its powers is Dragon Claw. Rayquazar. Something like that. And then it's got like a, an eye. Yeah. Like a big, strong body. Uh, as a star, this is pretty good. <laughs> and it's got like a big tail and funny little arms. You know, you're not far off. Quite really? Impressive. Yeah, you're not. It's not as quite as the first as a guess. It's pretty good. Okay, you've sort of gone off track a bit now, but it's still good. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. What'd you say it did? Okay, so it's got a dragon claw power and it lives in the ozone layer far above the clouds and cannot be seen from the ground. Oh, okay. Apparently. Then it needs to have wings. Little flying rat boy. <laughs> now put it in a cage in a Wuhan wet market. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got spunk. He's got mm. character. Hold on. So he's got, he can run really fast. Okay, so he's more like this. Ray Quizar sounds like someone tried to do like a funny quiz team name and they couldn't quite figure it out. They like panicked. It's like, Ray Quizar? <laughs> oh, no game. Yeah, they thought it was a pun and then they thought about it longer and then we all Should have just gone with Adolf Quizler like all the time. Okay, am I close? Is that Ray Quizar? Okay, it's Snake Boy. Go, Flying Snake Boy! <laughs> Tune in next week for another product, I mean, Pokemon, for you to purchase. No, his power will be um, Quasar Ray. Quasar Ray. I've got a card here called Cricketune. Yeah. And uh, his power is improvisational performance. <laughs> what is that? Is it like improv? He just puts on a little black turtleneck and he's just like, has anyone got any suggestions for powers? <laughs> you, sir, what do you do for work? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, front row. I think I heard psychiatrist, and I think it'd go something like this. <laughs> it's amazing. I think improv is the lowest form of comedy. I hate it. Even though technically that's yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> but I mean more like yeah. I mean more like hey. improvisational theatre comedy. Oh my god, I can't believe you brought your baby to rock climbing class. <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> oh, fuck, just go with it, Steve. I heard you got uh, free lessons in rock climbing um, from your dead uncle. You are incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, here's a box. <laughs> yeah, and then he gets really <laughs> stage frightened as well. He doesn't have anything to say afterwards. Then he just goes... <sighs> <laughs> just a really unfortunate e exhale. Is anyone else really sweaty? He just like takes off his turtleneck. Just like... <sighs> anyway, yeah, my name's Steve. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I'm supposed to improv something. Uh, it's Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> he can't even think of a different name. Someone that. walks in the room and he just goes, uh, you're dead. <laughs> what? 
What? You are dead. Okay. This, this, please. <laughs> just starts crying. He just starts. <laughs> but it just ends in him, in him, in the fetal position. Just going like, I'm funny. Tell me, I'm funny. I love Steve the Improv. <laughs> He's the bit. He needs to be like a recurring character. Steve the Improv. He's brilliant because you can just pull him out whenever you're struggling. Just go. What's the deal with um, <laughs> stage lighting? Am I right, guys? It shines on you and makes you feel warm. I suppose it does light up the set. <gasps> <laughs> Do aliens count as monsters, or are they a separate category? I think they're a separate category, although I think some aliens have been monstified. Definitely. You can have aliens that are monsters, but only if they're not anthropomorphic. Like, the aliens from Alien, they're monsters. <laughs> totally. But then the aliens from Signs, I don't think are monsters. Yeah, ooh, interesting. They're aliens. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. What about, uh, what's that one? Horn Mouth Man? Horn Mouth? <laughs> horn Mouth? I like that. SCP Horn Head. I'm getting closer. Siren Head. Siren Head? Oh, I like that. You don't know about Siren Head? No. He's the new hip monster. Oh, yeah, I like, I like this. This is good. Yeah. Wow. Look at that guy. Brilliant. That's real too. Oh, good to know. I'm scared. Very good, very good. So, what do you think of this monster? I think it's very much of our time. See, I like this kind of monster because because it's a monster that reflects societal fears. <gasps> it's a, the fear of technology. Technology! What? Horns? <laughs> horns, yeah. I mean, I, I, aren't you terrified of horns? It's so loud. I know, it hurt my ears. That guy is giving everyone tinnitus in like a 10 mile radius. You know what he looks like? some kind of radio tower. <laughs> it's almost... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, he, he ticks a lot of boxes, though. Yeah, yeah. You look at him from a distance and you can't... I mean, you can sort of... You can figure out his shape and everything, but there's an innate mystery around it. Like, how does he work? Where is he from? Yeah. What, like, it's the intrigue of it. That's brilliant. You immediately want to know more and you know that it's threatening and terrifying. I think you've really cottoned on to something in there because the best monsters are those that have a backstory, mm. but one that just, that you get to fill in. Mm. Like Slender Man, for example. Yeah, the more that gets fleshed out, the worse it gets. They made a Slender Man movie, who gives a fuck? Like, I don't, mm. don't want to watch that. I just want to think about Slender Man. And that's why Siren Head is great. It's just like, all you want is a 10 second clip. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Yeah, well, it's one of the SCPs. There's a lot of quite good SCPs. Yes. Remind me what that stands for. Uh, uh, secure, contain, protect. It's like this. Oh, yes. Yes. I hope this isn't too much like hyperbole, but I think it is one of the best writing by committee group pieces of literature since the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Oh, I know what to do, ordinary things. Just had a spontaneous idea, not planned ahead of time. Let's draw the ultimate monster. I'll draw it, and you describe what it's like. That sounds great, let's do it. I see a monster with like like two big teeth that start from the bottom jaw and are so big. Almost like he has a mustache made of teeth. Yeah, that's pretty spooky. One eye, I reckon. Pretty scary. So far we've got Cyclops with dental problems. I see him a bit more bear-like. He's got like a bear body. Okay, so he's got like bear nose. Yeah. I've drawn like a cute kitten. This is more like a teddy bear, but I'll, I'll go with it. Oh, but but with spikes. Yeah, spikes. You've got spikes. you got to have spikes. He's got like, okay, bear body. No, I think we should take some Slender Man and just give him a suit. Oh, yeah, uh, yes. Okay, okay. Suit. This isn't super scary, I'll be honest. No, if you saw it in an alleyway, you'd be a bit scared. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you woke up and that was on the end of your bed. You go to a McDonald's bathroom and this guy's just standing in the urinal beside you, just giving you looks. You'd be unnerved. A big monobrow. Now, what's his superpower? The quasar ray? I think he eats humans. Okay, he eats humans. But like, because he's got a business suit, it suggests that he's a little bit more like sophisticated. I mean, yeah, so he does it with like a knife and fork. Yeah, okay. So he's... What's his name? What's this monster called? Ray... <laughs> Quasar... <laughs> Let's ask Steve, the improv dude. He'll know. Uh, <laughs> uh, his name is uh, Bear Knife Fork. <laughs> spider legs. <gasps> That's it. Spider legs. 
but like daddy long legs legs. Oh mate, this is, this is good. This is a good monster. I'm pretty pretty pleased with this sucker. That's how he walks around. We'll give him a real name. I think. Uh, how do people name monsters normally? It's true. Uh, Vampire succubus. Frankenstein. Mento, the monster. <laughs> oh, I like Mento. Mento. Because he's also got mind powers. One of his mind powers is to hypnotize you with his big eye, right? And then you just get on you get on his plate and just he eats you without complaint. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's it's Mento, but the O is a spiral. Oh yeah, Mento. For like hypnosis. And his weakness is um Coca-Cola. Oh, right. I just got on you, man. And, like, I like to think that he haunts the backstage of theatres. Sort of like a bit of Phantom of the Opera style. Oh, that's quite good. Yeah. He was an actor who never made it, and so he um, only eats other actors as revenge. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Okay, I just imagine the stage manager of this theatre where Mento lives. It's just like, okay, everyone, just got some few, <laughs> a few, few basic safety things to go over. The fire exits are this way. Um, <laughs> you need to line up outside if you ever hear the alarm. And also, carry Coca-Cola with you at all times because <laughs> Mento is lurking around and he will eat your organs. And his legs don't actually make the noise, but he does. Because <laughs> he's theatrical. He's an out-of-work actor, so he's always just going like... Oh... <laughs> Dude, I love that. That that actually is kind of creepy. Like, he thinks that whenever he kills someone for real, it's like part of some play. Ooh. And he's like, oh yeah, right, you're that character in Tempest or something. Minto, SCP-4562. Uh, I'm creative. Just, just, um, make this an SCP, right? It's fucking brilliant. And if they delete it or the mods come along, just make it again. And just put it somewhere else. Just keep hiding Mento. Mento deserves to be an SCP. Thank you. Maybe it was like the Opie and Anthony show or something like that. They had this guy and he was talking about how he was in Iraq during the Gulf War. And he said he basically saw a monster. And not like in like, oh my god, this man has become a monster. Like he said he saw a monster. It had a guy chest. It was like this eye. Glowing eyes. Almost like a horse, but a wolf, but a guy. The thing he described is he says it looked like a werewolf. It had yeah. four feet. It was a werewolf. I reckon what he saw was an escaped bear from the zoo and it was shaved it was shaved. A shave. Who's who's out there shaving bears? I, I, I think that they had shaved a bear and <laughs> roaming around. This is what a bear looks like without its fur. Oh, I could see why people would think that was a werewolf. If you saw that in the dark, you would think like that is a man transforming into a wolf, like mid transition. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much they look like um like cats or rabbits. Like they all have the same sort of physiology once they're yeah. once they're all nude. What's your favorite monster? Just like off the top of your dome, you've got no time to think about it. As much as people aren't gonna like this answer, Slender Man. Slender Man. See, I don't know much about mm. Slender Man. Oh, watch out, boyo. He's gonna get ya. Right, so he's got no face, right? He's tall. Yeah. Wears a nice suit, but don't look at his face. So what happens if you look into his face? Everything will go staticky, Ooh. like this. Gary. And then you'll disappear, and I believe you join his child army. Ooh. I guess they're like Joseph Coney and his child soldiers or something. Yeah, exactly. I don't exactly know how it works. So he's a bit of a Pied Piper type figure. He steals kids. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. On that note, how creepy is the Pied Piper story? Do you remember getting told that story as a kid? Is that the one about him leading all the rats out of the town? This is how I remember it going. Oh my god, there's rats everywhere. I think, I think we have to do something about these rats. I think there's someone at the door. Hello, everyone. I'm the Pied Piper. <laughs> I've got a solution for your rat problem. Oh, yeah? Go on. He's dressed like Lyle Lanley from The Simpsons. I've got this magic flute, and I'll play it, and all the rats will follow me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely work. Um, all I ask mm. is that you give me a lot of gold when I'm done. Uh, all right, we'll see what we can do. Great. Great. I imagine then he leaves the room and the townspeople are just like, what a freak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, is he talking about his cock? <laughs> I don't know, it sounded like... I mean, he didn't have a flute on him. He was dressed like a pervert. But, true to his word, 
gets all the rats, <laughs> whatever, and all the rats start following him, maybe doing a little dance out of town. Doesn't he lead him off a cliff? Oh, he does, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like to imagine that he just like is playing, 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 gets really close to the cliff and then just like at the last minute tactically jumps behind a bush <laughs> or something, a conveniently placed bush. <laughs> yeah, it just spins on his heel. 23 skidoo. Solid snakes into a cardboard box. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Where did he go? Oh, it doesn't matter. Right. Follow the music. So he walks back into the town meeting. All right, guys, where's my gold? All these guys are still discussing, was it his dick? <laughs> they're just like, well, you've got rid of the rats now, so why should we pay you? I think they're just pricks. I think that's the story. There might be more of a reasoning to it. The mayor reneges on his promise and refuses. I, I will not pay you, Pied Piper, despite your very neat hat. And I refuse to pay the full sum, which is 50 guilders, which uh, once adjusted for inflation. We, we had it adjusted for inflation. It was there. It's in brackets. Look at the screenshot. Here it is. I don't know. It's just what Wikipedia said. Anyway, it's $14 billion. Shut up. I am livid. Uh, I shall take my revenge <laughs> in the most reasonable manner I can. A grand act of child genocide via a musical number. The Piper returned, dressed in green, as all hunters are. Nice outfit change. Well, we'll just add in the, the spring in my step music as he gets changed. Kids, I've got a, I've got a track for you that you're not going to believe. 130 children followed him out of town. That's a precise number, 130. I guess this was told like it must have been a real story. Uh, some versions state that the Piper returned the children after payment. The townspeople then went, oh shit, okay, hold on, wait, 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 here's your gold. And then he went, yeah, all right. I was really set on murdering all your children, but <laughs> seeing as you've given me the money, I guess I can, I can be the bigger man. <laughs> the Hamlin Street named... Uh, Unpronounceable. Street with the drums is believed to be the last place the children were ever seen. Ooh, ever since musical dancing is not allowed Ooh. on that street. That's great. That's good. That's a great story. That's there's like a, a lot of good storytelling in that. You can see how why it's lasted the test of time. Oh, sorry, ordinary things. I'm going into a tunnel. I am also going into a tunnel. <laughs> a separate one, though, no, no. from the one you're going into. Oh, no. <laughs> no, wait. Oh, but actually, I'm going into an elevator. Uh, I, and, and I've got I've got to go now. Goodbye. You just stay there. I've also... I have a call with my great aunt about her will, so I also have to... No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, it's Steve the Improv dude here. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Uh, you're dead. Nord. 